stretching from the northern pole and northern Canada to Amazon rainforest, you experience amazing change in wilderness. You come across the freezing and barren place without trees, where only tiny brownish green plants survive in the icy ground. But walk further towards south and you enter a magical world of coniferous forests. This place has a serene beauty of wildlife where moose, caribou, wolves and different species of animals and birds are found here. Now gradually, the conifers disappear and you reach the vast sea of grassland of prairies. As you cross the grassland and go further south, you feel the scorching heat of cactus-filled deserts. Here, the temperature soars to 45 degrees. This place is without plants or grass. All you find here are thorny cactus. Trudge still down south, and you reach southern Mexico, where deserts and cacti disappear. Here, you find wonderful tropical trees with exotic birds chirping and insects droning around. Cross this and you arrive in Colombia and Andes mountain range. Here again, you are reminded of the cold chilly peaks of the North Canada. This descends into dense swampy forests of Amazon. Each bio has its distinctive climate and habitat, but sometimes Similar biomes occur in different places. For instance, Brazil, Africa and Southeast Asia have plants and animals with similar habitat. While the prairies of North America, China, Australia and Argentina too have similar biome. Although plants and animals that inhabit are different, they live in the similar ways. Let us now feel the cold and chilly biome of the Tega region. This biome occupies a little larger area than all the tropical rainforests. The Tega biome is the second largest in size to the desert. It occupies about one-tenth of Earth's land surface. The taiga grows in the extreme weather encircling the northern hemisphere from Alaska to Japan. The trees that grow in this region are the conifers. They have their leaves throughout the year and produce cones instead of flowers. Sometimes just few conifer species such as spruces, pines or firs are found abundantly in this region. The taiga that is grown in the icy land near the Arctic Circle has sometimes fully grown trees which are known as boreal forest. Some taiga forest also grows along the northwestern coast of North America. Here there is so much rainfall that taiga is sometimes described as rainforest. The forest is filled with conifers rather than rainforest trees which are found near the equator. Now let us know what the word Tega means. Since a major part of Russia has dense pine forests, it is derived from the Russian language which means the marshy pine forest. Talking of the boreal forest, this too is named after the Greek god Boreas, which means the god of the north wind. Tega covers Alaska, Canada and extends to New England, Scandinavia and Japan. This region is the world's largest source of soft food for timber and paper making. It also has important reserves of fossil fuel like oil and gas. However, due to harsh weather and enormous size, it is still an original wilderness and sparsely populated. 
beyond the northern limits of Tega, the temperature is too low for any full-size trees to grow. So the biome with plants and shrubs replaced Tega. This biome is known as the Tundra Biome. The southern limits of Tega opens up to the forests of broad-leaved trees. And in between this, you come across the scenic beauty of forests, wetlands and lakes. Now coming to the northwestern belt of American Tega, we find this place full of forests, lakes and rivers. Canada, which is in this region, has more lakes than any other country. The Lake Anthabasca in Canada has largest deposits of tar, oil and other useful substances. The oil workers here clear the sandy soil to get the required substances. Located in the Gulf of Alaska is Kodiak Island. This was the first European colony in Alaska. Brown bears are commonly found here. Close to Kodiak Island is the world's second largest taiga in form of Denali National Park. This taiga region has tallest mountain called the Mount McKinley. The tallest point of this mountain is 6,194 meters. Along the forests of Pacific Coast from Oregon to Alaska is wet rainforest region. This forest is more lush greener than the rest of Tega. The forests here have trees growing for more than 2,000 years. Dividing the Northwest Territory from Alaska is a huge mountain range called the Rockies. It runs nearly 4,800 kilometers long till Mexico in the south. You have the Great Bear Rainforests. It is home to approximately 2,000 grizzly bears. This place also has trees which are 1,000 years old. Let us now feel the climate of this region. Most of the year, Tega is dark and cold and covered with snow and ice. But short period of summer and spring brings in warm, where ice and snow melts and the Tega forest comes to life. The plants now have to cope up with damp soil and a lot of water to collect nutrients for their growth. Favoring this, tall coniferous trees grow abundantly in this region. Similar conditions also exist in the southern hemisphere, but no Tega forests grow here. This is mainly due to large area being covered by the ocean. The Tega forests develop where growing season for the plants is at least three months. And the average temperature in the warmest month is approximately 10 degrees. Do you know, an amazing difference in temperature is found in Siberia. In fact, the difference is the largest than anywhere else on this earth. In winter, Siberia's temperature drops to as low as minus 68 degrees, while in summer, it rises up to 30 degrees. A phenomenal difference of approximately 100 degrees. Tega may be cold for most of the year, but the presence of snow benefits the plants. The snow acts like a fluffy air-filled jacket insulating the trees and soil from cold, bitter air. In winter, the soil at a depth of 50 centimeters can be much warmer than the air above. This depth, the tree roots are able to take life-giving water, even if the temperature above the ground is below the freezing point. Ganifas are the main plantations of Tega region but some broad-leaved deciduous trees which shed their leaves each year are also found here. There is plenty of water, but it is frozen. So the plants here have to bear 
with water shortage like that in the desert during spring deciduous trees grow a new set of leaves which they have shed in autumn this is only partial since coniferous evergreens keep their needle like leaves for several years now let us talk about the soil of this region the layered soil of taiga forest is called podzol the word podzol is derived from the russian word for ash it is the color of one of the layers of this soil podzol forms due to decomposition of shedding of leaves pine needles and other waste from the trees the combination of cold and wet condition along with the decaying plant matter makes the upper layer of the soil acidic the ground which is covered with all this slowly starts decaying over the years the amount of water falling from rain hail and snow is more than the air raised by the evaporation so the extra water which sinks in the ground turns acidic this acid rich water dissolves metals such as iron and aluminum from the soil and deposits them deep down sometimes iron rich layers called iron pans stop water from draining deeper into the ground as a result soil above the iron pan gets filled with the water which drives all the air out of the soil over 100 years the decomposed plant material and soil accumulated here forms peat scientists can unlock the ancient history of the taiga from its peat pollen grains from the plants can survive for thousands of years in peat scientists collect the pollen grains from different layers of peat and can determine the life of trees which grew in the nearby area it also tells them about the climate at that time and the relevant changes now in the northern canada and parts of siberia the taiga grows above a solid layer of frozen icy ground this frosty soil is called permafrost tree roots cannot penetrate through this icy ground so they spread sideways to collect water the trees spread their roots above the permafrost so that they can absorb sun's heat directly without allowing it to reach the icy ground seeds buried in permafrost can remain for thousands of years there are two types of taiga open and closed taiga The northern end of the taiga has the temperature which is very cold for the trees to survive. So, to the south of this region, open taiga grows. The trees growing in open taiga are generally small and lean and more widely spaced. Between the widely spaced trees, plenty of sunlight reaches the ground. Lichens, mosses, dwarf willows, shrubs and small ground plants flourish in these clearings in the warmer areas of taiga water is available to plants for longer periods of the year the trees grow more densely creating closed taiga forest the tree cover is so thick here that very little light reaches the forest floor shrubs and other small plants have less chances of survival in the closed taiga low lying hollows of depressions in these forests collect water from nearby areas they make the soil very wet for any trees to grow the falling of leaves and other tree waste gets collected in these hollows and decays slowly creating good condition for the growth of mosses like sphagnum these mosses change the condition of the soil then over the decades the mosses die away creating sedimentation of soil this 
soil is then ready for new trees to grow. After talking about the climate of Tega region, we now describe the Northeastern American Tega. This belt spreads around the ancient mountains and the wet lowlands. Most of the area in this region was created by massive glaciers. This region also has a huge landscape of Hudson Bay. Since this area has large number of lakes, more than half of Canada's electricity comes from the hydroelectric power stations located in Tega. This has damaged the wilderness of Tega. However, in the last 30 years, Canada's national and provincial government had to take steps to conserve the wilderness of Tega. Some 25 years back, the Cree and Inuit people living around the southern part of Hudson Bay had lost their land for dams and power stations. This was done to provide power to Quebec and Ontario. Farmers too have been clearing most of the forests along the rivers, thus destroying the wilderness of this place. But having realized the importance of maintaining wilderness of Tega, plans to further develop the wilderness have been curbed. Talking of lakes of this region, one cannot forget the world's largest freshwater lake. This is Lake Superior, which is almost as big as Ireland. There are other small lakes too surrounding this lake. And they are Lake Eura, Lake Michigan, and Lake Nipigon. Just above this lake is a huge gorge, which is 152 meters wide and 107 meters deep. This place is known as Quimet Canyon. Going further, you come across the Canadian Sheet. It is a flat area covering most of the Northern Canada. It is believed that this area was once a towering mountain range which was denuded and is made of oldest rocks in the world. Manicouagan Reservoir in the Canadian Shield is a natural reservoir which was once a vast asteroid crater. Coming towards the Labrador Sea, you embrace a large peninsula with rugged coasts and high cliffs with inlets of the sea. Here, many islands were formed by glaciers. One such island is Newfoundland. This place was visited by the Viking explorers some 500 years before Columbus could reach America. Let us now talk about the Tega plants and trees. Trees dominate the Tega, but they do not have the diversity of tropical forests due to the extreme conditions of survival. There are very few species of plants and conifers as compared to other tropical and temperate regions. Since the end of the last ice age, some 10,000 years ago, glaciers have receded from Tega. Very few glaciers in some parts of Alaska and Norway now flow through Tega regions. In many parts of Tega, trees have to get water and nutrients from the soil just one meter below the ground. During the freezing winters, they have to survive the harsh weather and hold on to all water which they can get. For this, the conifers have needle-like leaves having thick wax coats that stops water from leaking out and also stops the snow to accumulate on the leaves. It also acts like a shield protecting the leaf. Dense Tega forests create their own environment. The sheltered, shaded conditions trap the moist air, reduce wind speed and maintain the existing temperature. The leaves 
to photosynthesize and grow whenever the sun shines during short warm summer. Beneath the forest floor, many fungal hyphen grow, which provide nutrients and protect the trees from disease and harmful soil bacteria. In return, trees create right conditions for hyphens to flourish. They shed dead leaves, on which we hyphen feed. They also provide sugar for them through their roots. Without hyphae, the conifer forest would not flourish and small tega plants such as orchids would not survive. The plants of the forest floor grow in dull and dim light. Some plants bear nectar-rich flowers to attract insects to pollinate them. Plants such as cowberries, wintergreens, starflowers have white flowers which attract bees and butterflies and this makes the dull forest look lively and colourful. Most of the conifers produce scaly structures called cones. This is equal to a flower of a plant. Male cones tend to be smaller than female cones and these mature early. They produce pollen grains which are released in the air when the cone opens up. The pollen is carried by the wind and caught by the open female cones. The male and female pollen cells fuse inside the female cone and produce seeds. This fusion of male and female cells is termed as fertilization. The female cone does not open till the seeds ripe. The ripe seeds then fall out of the cone and are carried by wind to find a suitable place to grow. The entire breeding process takes about 15 months. Plants do not always rely on transport of pollen to spread their growth. Many plants are able to produce seeds without receiving pollen from other plants. The common wood sorrel and mealy produced white flowers to attract insects and can also pollinate on their own. They produce new plants by growing underground stems that develop independent roots. The trees that grow in North American taiga are typical around the world. The spruces and firs cover large area while deciduous trees such as birches, oak, Douglas fir and maple are more common towards south. The coastal forest has giant redwood trees which are unique. Spruces grow slowly and need damp soil throughout the year. In winter, these trees look very attractive as their dark green color contrasts to the white snow. They also have a special place in Nordic folklore which says they are home to mischievous gnomes goblins and trolls. In Europe and North America, people buy conifers to decorate their homes during Christmas. Different species are chosen in different countries. The link between conifers and Christmas goes back more than 1,000 years. As per the folklore tradition, Saint Boniface, an English missionary in Germany, stumbled across people worshipping an oak tree dedicated to God Thor. In fury, Boniface cut down the tree and fir began to grow in its place. Since then, fir trees, also known as Christmas tree, has been linked with Christian worship. Beneath the forest floor, small plants find great difficulty in survival. The trees cut out the sunlight take away water and nutrients from the soil. They also shed twigs, leaves and other waste which hampers the growth of small plants. Very few plants can survive under this dense forest canopy. But then nature is kind 
and gives these plants an opportunity to survive and thrive. If there is a clearing of trees due to either felling or forest fire, these plants grow quickly and spread their seeds before a new tree takes over the space. A few shrubs like junipers, wild roses and alders can survive under thick canopy of trees. The fruits of these shrubs provide food to the animals of this region. The tangled branches of these shrubs provide shelter to the animals. Animals disperse seeds of these fruits and thus help in growth of these shrubs. After small shrubs, we talk of still smaller plants like mosses and lichens. They cover the tree trunks and damp ground of taiga. They photosynthesize, but unlike plants and trees, they do not have true leaves. Plants that do not have true leaves, roots and stem are known as thalophytes. They take nutrients from the soil, but do not have roots. They reproduce sexually, but do not produce pollen grains. They release sperms in water, which fertilize, giving rise to new plants. They absorb water and minerals directly from snow and rain. A few deciduous trees, which shed their leaves in winter, also grow in taiga. Birches, oak, elm, beech, aspen and poplars grow in Europe and Asia. The European taiga stretches across the continent, from Scotland to the Urals in Russia. In the West Europe, they grow around lakes and wetlands. While in East, they cover huge featureless lowland. The tree cutting, sheep and deer gazing here has changed the original forest. Coming towards Norway and Sweden, the conifers here were badly damaged due to the acid rains created from the pollution of the UK and Germany. Entering Strebersdala, the Norwegian national park, the taiga here grows till far northern end. Very close to this is the Kola Peninsula. This part of Scandinavia is in Russia. It is an important mining center and has several hydroelectric power plants along its rivers. The Ural mountain range separates Europe from Asia. This region is rich in metals such as copper, nickel, gold and platinum. The Pya Haki in Finland is a protected forest area. Most of the trees here are more than 250 years old and a few even date back from 14th century. The people have been living in Tega region for more than 100,000 years and have adapted to bitter cold and chilly climate of this region. Animals too have adapted to live in cold conditions. With this cold note, let us now watch what happens next? The long cold winter months of snow and ice are a great challenge for all the animals living in this region. But in spite of the harsh weather, there exists wide variety of animals, including some of the largest land animals in the world. Most of the large animals feed on plants, leaves, fruits and seeds. But during long winters, they have to depend on tree bark, mosses and lichens. Chipmunks, wood mice and squirrels rely on the hidden stores of seeds and fruits. Small creatures such as invertebrates and insects live under the bark of trees and beneath litter of leaves under the soil. In winters, they hide away in a dormant state. Some of these animals have
have natural antifreeze body fluids. These substances stop them from freezing to death. Most Tega invertebrates feed on dead remains of plants and animals, that is, they are decomposers. Others feed on the hardwood of trees, which are deep inside their trunks. Slugs, millipedes, wood lice and beetles feed on the decomposing plant matter. As the summer is short here, Tega forest is full of life with flying insects which survive by biting larger animals. The elk and reindeer are the Tega's largest plant eaters. Reindeer or caribou migrate from tundra to Tega region in winter. But elk remains in tundra throughout the year. It prefers to graze on leaves and fruits of small plants. They have large appetite and can eat 15 kg of food in a day. In winter, due to scarcity of food, they eat barks of the trees. This way, a large population of elk can destroy forests. Wood bison, a rare animal, is found in the southern parts of North American taiga. Unlike other taiga predators, grey wolves hunt unitedly. In winter, when food is scarce, they collectively track down their prey and overpower even the strongest animal. Thick fur or feathers keep many taiga animals warm in winter and also protect them from predators. A mammal weasel has brown colored coat in summer. It molds its skin and becomes white in winter. Some mammals, like the snowshoe here and stoat, turn white in winter. This change of color protects these animals from predators. It also offers better insulation than dark fur. Large animals have better advantage in winter than small animals as it acts as camouflage which is matching the environment. This is because they have smaller body surface but bigger cover of thick blubber around their body. This cover stops body heat to escape and provides heat and energy required in winter. This is why Many Tega animals are record breakers. The elk is the world's largest deer and wolverine is the largest weasel found here. Many birds nest on Tega trees and raise their young ones, then fly south to spend the winter in warmer areas. Some birds, however, remain in Tega throughout the year. The woodpeckers Crossbills, nuthatches, and capercaily are among the few who remain in Tega throughout the year. The capercaily feed on wild fruits in summer and autumn and on pine needles in winter. They stay on trees during the cold winter days and bury themselves in snow at night. In summers, these birds have typical way to win their territories along with females. To win the females, they fight till one is seriously injured or dead. The woodpeckers use their chisel-like beak to dig holes in the tree trunks and eat insects and ants. These voracious birds can eat thousands of ants and beetle larvae in a single meal. The holes made by these woodpeckers are then used by squirrels and owls as their nests. The nutcrackers and crossbills, on the other hand, eat seeds of coniferous trees. Crossbills are the only birds that breed in winter. They use their stored supply of seeds from the cones in winter and breed throughout the season. The nutcrackers breed in spring. In winter, they use the supply of seeds which they have buried in autumn. 
forest voles are tiny rodents and they avoid winters by digging tunnels in snow. Squirrels and chipmunks eat pine nuts and bury cones for winter. In summer, a squirrel can bury around 200 cones in a day. Stoats mate during the summer, but do not develop babies until many months. This is done to ensure that young ones when born in the spring have plenty of food available for them. The small forest predators hunt beneath the snow. The weasels and stoats pursue shrews and rodents. These in turn hunt insects while the rodents search for pine cones. The great grey owls have thick down feathers which protect them from severe cold. They hunt by listening for any scratching in the snow. On locating the prey, the owl hovers above, then plunges through the snow and kills the prey by biting on the neck. Large animals have difficulty moving through the deep snow, except for wolverines. Wolverines have broad feet, just like snowshoes which make it easier for them to walk on the snow. Its dense long fur protects them from icy weather. It does not freeze even when wet. Wolverines are lonely animals. Except during the brief breeding season, they mostly eat small rodents, eggs, young birds and insects, and sometimes wild fruits and pine seeds. They also scavenge on scraps left behind by wolves. They are very secretive animals and female wolverines give birth to just two or three cubs in late winters. The young ones are ready to hunt for themselves by the end of first summer. Many tega animals spend the cold winters by hibernating. That is, they are inactive and lie idle in winters. They eat as much as they can during short summers and put on fat reserves which last them throughout the winters. Nevertheless, some animals rely on the food stored during winters. The Siberian chipmunk often leaves its nest to feed on the seeds stored. Siberian taiga is the world's largest forest and covers the area twice as that of Amazon rainforest. It is bordered by the Arctic tundra in the north and Kazakh and Mongolian steppes in the south. Much of Russia's wealth lies beneath the taiga of Siberia. Most of Russia's petroleum and gas reserves are drilled in western Siberia, while eastern Siberia has huge coal deposits. Most of the Siberian rivers run into Arctic Ocean and are often blocked by ice. The Ob River, which is 5,410 kilometers long, flows from Altai Mountains close to the Mongolian border in Arctic Ocean. The Yenisei River is an important transport route. Timber is shipped from this river. It is believed that North America's earliest people came from this region. A unique volcanic rock formation in this region by wind and rain is known as Stolbe. Many of them are found in the Tega Nature Reserve along the Yenisei River. A huge meteorite smashed into the ground near the stony Tunguska River. More than 2,150 kilometers of the forest was destroyed and hundreds of miles away, the trains were derailed by the impact. Speaking of the railway, one of the world's longest railways is the Trans-Siberian Railway that links Leningrad on Baltic coast with Vladivostok on Pacific coast. This railway link extends more than 8,000 kilometers. This railway
crosses seven different time zones. It crosses deserts, mountains and forests and takes seven days to travel the entire length. Along this railway close to Irkutsk is the Lake Baikal. This river has the largest volume of fresh water. It is also the deepest lake and has around 1,500 unique plants and animals including freshwater seals. In past, people survived here by hunting, fishing and herding reindeers. The first settlers in this region arrived by boat, travelling along the rivers like Ob, Yenisei, Lynn, Mackenzie and Yukon. Archaeological survey shows that people have lived in Tega for more than 100,000 years. People from Europe and Asia may have been the first to settle around 30,000 years ago. And this could be when a strip of land existed between Siberia and Alaska. This strip was called the Bering Bridge. But this strip has since then disappeared under sea. Presently, Bering Strait. The Kanti people of North Russia dug caves in the snow and covered the entrance with animal skins. In summers, people made temporary shelters from poles covered in animal skin or birch bark. Some Europeans and Asian Tega people lived by fishing and led a more settled life. In winters, they stored food and lived collectively in groups. Not much is known about Native Americans except in fables and folklore. Probably these natives colonized about 12,000 years back. These people were ancestors of the Algonquians and Anthabascans. These people were hunters and fisher folks. In winters, they hunted caribous and elks. And during short springs and summers, they did fishing in the lakes and rivers and gathered wild fruits, nuts and roots to supplement their diet of meat. Like most people living on this earth, the Tega people too have spiritual traditions and they believe many forest animals are sacred to them. Each clan or tribe believed that they descended from a particular animal which became their revered emblem or totem. Clans and tribes believed it to be sinful to hunt these animals. Like for instance, even if the wolves are killing and attacking their herds of caribou, they will not kill the wolf. They believed that if the wolf was killed, the spirit world would take revenge and send more and more wolves to attack the herds. Tribes of Tega region made totem poles very attractive and decorative. These poles are from 2 meters to 16 meters. They are a mark of respect for different functions like honoring certain animals, to record the clan's history, or even to ward off evil spirits. Siberia became Russian territory, where political rebels and criminals were sent. Joseph Stalin created enormous network of prison camps here. Today, most Siberians live in cities like Irkutsk, Tomsk, and Yakutsk. Europeans settled in North American Tega, while the British settled in Hudson Bay. The French settled in Labrador and St. Lawrence River Valley. In 1867, USA purchased Alaska from Russia. Since then, a mix of people from Europe, Asia and native descendants live in Alaska today. Anthabascan descent lives in Tega of Alaska and Central Canada. 
the tribes of Tanena, Tana Chipewa, Algonquin, and Cree were original hunters and lived in remote areas, leading partial nomadic primitive life. However, with modernization, they have adopted to the new lifestyle. But they still retain their ethnic identity by practicing traditional crafts, dances, and religious ceremonies. Natives of Tega were tough, as life here was never easy. The women gave birth by the campfire in freezing conditions. The newborn child was rubbed in snow before being held by the mother. Even today, people here live without medical facilities and the infant death rate is twice than that of Russia. Many outsiders have brought in new diseases like smallpox, measles, influenza and tuberculosis for which people here have little or no immunity. Also, introduction to alcoholic drinks and drugs are the challenges to be tackled here. Earlier, Russians began to colonize in Siberian Tega. But with the rising demand for furs of foxes, beavers, minks and sables, other countries like France and Britain started invading this place which led to several wars with natives fighting for both the countries. By the 19th century, hunting reduced and demand for fur products dropped. Today, there is a ban on hunting in many parts of Tega. Canadian government began controlling the fur hunting. An environmental hazard is also a major threat to the Tega people. Tree cutting began hundreds of years ago in the Tega region. Loggers from Sweden and Finland felt trees to provide fuel for iron industry. In Russia, the clear felled areas have turned into bogs and on slopes this has led to soil erosion. It has also caused nearby rivers to fill with silt. The washed away areas made it difficult for the trees to regrow. Mining has also drawn people to this place. The search of gold and other precious metals has drawn miners and smelters to this place and this has led to creating craters and heaps of unwanted dirt and rocks. They have produced pollution which is spread by wind and rivers. Now let us come towards the East Asian Tega. This place is home to some of the world's rarest animals including Siberian Tiger and Snow Leopard. Siberian tigers are the world's largest cats. In winter, their red striped fur becomes paler to camouflage in the snow. East Asian Tega extends from southern Russia, northern China, part of northern Korea and Japan. Till last few decades, the Arakuin tribe of northern China lived a nomadic life. They herded reindeer and lived in tents covered with birch bark in summer and deer skin in winter. Today, they live a more settled life with modern amenities like television and radios. But then, they still wear traditional clothes and hats made of deer head along with their antlers. The women continue to make household items and canoes from birch bark. The Heilongjiang province of China is home to these nomadic people. This province is thickly forested, although it is close to one of the most heavily industrialized region of China. Large scales of deforestation and acid rains have damaged Japan's Tega forest. The Hokkaido forest in northern Japan is home to macaques, the only monkeys living in Tega. The Kuris Islands have great mineral resources, while Sakhalin Island 
was once the main region for wildlife. Today, this place is heavily deforested due to industrialization. The Verkhoyansk, a small town in Siberia, is the coldest town in the whole world. The temperature once dropped to minus 90 degrees in 1933. Equally bitter cold city for most of the year is Yakutsk in Russia. Many Russians were sent to this place in exile. But today, diamond mines have made this place popular. Houses here are built on stilts to keep the building's heat from melting in permafrost binning. Let us now know what the future of Tega is. Largely untamed. The Tega has escaped the impact of modern world. However, with the growth of tourism, industrialization and change in climate have adverse effects in this region. In the year 2000, the International Panel on Climate Change calculated rise in temperature by an average 3 degrees. This will affect the world. The sea level will raise, creating floods in many low-lying areas near the coast. Scientists are of the opinion that built-up carbon dioxide and other gases in the atmosphere are released when fossil fuel like oil, gas and coal is burned. All this gives a greenhouse effect, trapping the heat in the atmosphere and warming the planet's surface. Methane and water vapor too cause global warming. Methane is released when dead material decays and water vapor is added to the air when things are burnt. The Tega will change its size and may shift many miles to the north in near future. If Tega biome gets smaller, it may have an added effect on global warming. It is essential to conserve forest and the best way to establish protected reserve in which wood is harvested in sustainable way. Fire also plays an important role in ecology of the forest by clearing forests and maintaining the diversity of the new habitat. However, this can also be destructive Across the North American Tega, the area of the forest that burned each year in the 1990s was about double than that in 1940s. If this continues, the benefits of fire will turn into cause of destruction and increased global warming. Pulp and paper mills and ore smelters have also polluted many of the rivers. In 1990s, Cellulose processing factories on banks of Amur River near the border of China discharged around 38,000 million litres of polluted waste into the river every year. Close to these outlets, all young fish including commercial species were killed due to pollution. Tega people raise reindeer inside the thick forest for milk and they manage by eating snow buried berries and mushrooms. Despite difficulties, the people of North America, Europe and Asia grow crops in the thin soil and harsh climate of this region. Cereals, wheat, rye and vegetables like carrots and turnip are grown here. The southern limits are being pushed further north as forests are being cleared for growing crops and rearing cattle. In British Columbia and Alberta, farmers grow cereals, oil seed for vegetable oil and plants to feed their cattle. In southern areas of Ontario and Quebec, clover, corn and potatoes are grown. With the rise of population, North America and Russia too will need more land for cultivation and farming. Canada combines cattle rearing and growing crop cereal. 
there are two main taiga reserves in Canada. One, the Riding Mountain in Manitoba and the other, Charlevoix in Quebec. Charlevoix contains fir, spruce, pine and maple forests. An important part of reserve is the wetland drained by the St. Lawrence River and its tributaries. The animals found here are lynx, beaver, caribou and blue snow goose. The reserve is a popular tourist destination. Riding Mountain, on the other hand, is a small island of Tega Forest, surrounded by prairies and wetlands of Manitoba. Riding Mountain is the highest point and forms the centerpiece of the reserve. Although a small park, as compared to the other reserves, this does not lack wildlife. Wolves, black bears, moose, large herd of wood bison are found here. However, the park animals are at a receiving end from the hunters. Black bears and deers are lured out of the park with baits and shot there for sport. Bear hunting is legal in Canada, while deer hunting is not. Like many wilderness areas around the world, Tega too is being schooled for reserves of fossil fuels. The rivers in this biome are also trapped for their energy. In Canada, dams in Tega provide 60% of country's electricity. It is essential to preserve Tega, for their value lies not just in the wood they contain or their ability to clean the air or stop the floods and provide a living for millions of people. This biome has a beauty of its own with different plants and animals. Some scientists suggest planting faster growing Tega trees to slow down or reduce global warming. But this does not meet the damage already done. The best way to beat global warming is for the government to reduce the amount of fuel burning and to build flood defences against rising sea levels. But nevertheless, whatever the future holds, the Tega forests continue to flourish for many more years to come. One day, the lady crow laid eggs. And the crows were very happy.